Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Horror Room. I'm Travis Bruce, and today we're doing another indie horror spotlight. Today I have with us, I have Daniel Starts. He is the director of photography, and Kyle Simpson, he is the editor of Mitch Lang's latest movie, which is called Sea of Madness. Kyle, Daniel, welcome to the Horror Room. Hi. Hello. How are you? Thank Thank you for having us. Thanks for having us. Pleasure to have you guys on. All right, so I'm going to have you guys start off with, I, I just did an amazing interview a couple of weeks ago with Mitch, um, and we, we talked about a little bit about Sea of Madness, but I'm going to have you guys tell the audience who hasn't seen the interview a little bit about Sea of Madness. All right. Um, sea of Madness is uh, the character sequel to The Bog Man, the Bigfoot movie that we did last year that's out on Tubi and Amazon Prime and uh, other streaming services right now. Um the first movie was a creature. Basically, what we're doing is building a creature universe. We're doing, we did The Bog Man, which is a Bigfoot movie. And this next film called Sea of Madness, it was based on a book. We were going to do a film like this anyway, but the, the, the author of this book, Sea of Madness, we knew personally through Mitch. And it just fit with our story so much that Mitch talked with him. They were lifelong friends. And he allowed us to do it uh, based on his book. So Mitch tailored the story that he had in his head to the story of Sea of Madness in the book. And they came out with the movie version of it. And we just shot that here the past couple of months, a week or so at a time on the USS Kid in uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And it's dealing with evil mermaids, mer creatures, sea creatures, things of that nature. Um, we other have we have other other of these pl- pl- plans. We're calling it the BCU. It's the Bog Creature Universe. So it's a, a monster of the week every time with a different movie. We have we have several planned uh, all the way up. Next one would be an anthology movie that's going to be a three part short film, three short films that's going to be in a circular story with the family from the Bog Man. This guy Charles, the character he played in the Bog Man. Um, they will return and they will carry us through a series of stories that include a, uh, a bog man prequel called the bog manifest. That's, uh, going to be like the 1880s bog man. And these are all short. Right. Films. Then the next one would be face the music, which is a phenomenon type situation, but it does introduce our main villain for the next feature film, uh, evil Jen named Jack. And then the third part of that film would be uh, the rake episode. And that's the first episode of the Chasing Bogman TV show that we introduced in Bogman that is a, a running theme through all this. That's the first one where Richard returns to the group after Sea of Madness and everything after the Bogman and everything like that. So it's a key, key pivotal part too, but it's going to be three films in one and that's going to be after this Sea of Madness that we just did. It, see, Amanda should be out this October, though, uh, through Green Apple Entertainment. And I'm definitely looking forward to it. Um, I was a big fan of Bogman. By the way, streaming on Amazon and TV, so everyone, please check it out and Thanks. give it some love. <laughs> now, now this was, now, I was talking to Mitch. This movie was shot on the USS Kid, and he told me it was a pretty extreme shoot. Uh, yeah. So tell us a l- little bit about your experience. Kyle, I'm starting for you. T- tell us a little bit about your experience shooting this movie. Well, I, I actually didn't get to go down on the kid. Uh, with, with me being the editor, it's it, I kind of just phone back and forth with the guys. And as they're shooting stuff, they're throwing stuff at me. So I know, you know what kind of effects I'm going to have to make or edits I'm going to have to do to these shots. And if we can pull certain things off in post. Uh, but from what I can tell, it was pretty hectic. There's like, what, two, three crews going on at the same time? Yeah, we were we were all over that 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 historic ship like ants on a rice krispie treat, <laughs> all over the place. Uh, there was about up to maybe thirty five, forty of us at one point. You know, you know different points, but um, we had up to three crews running. We were there for the first stint. We did a five five days stay there and that was back in january and we got the bulk of everything we needed then but we were lucky enough to arrange with them they allowed us to come back for two more days uh two short days 
compared to what we did before, which was a, a, a relief in some sense, but we were able to get everything. So we have about 97% of the movie probably in the can. And really, other than one sequence, it's all, everything else is just me. I just always want more. <laughs> I just, I, I carpet bomb stuff. They're just, we shoot stuff out of such a necessity sometimes. It's not so much my style. It's more of a motive and an operandi to, to just not miss anything. So a lot of times I'll just have a camera somewhere running. They Most of the crew won't even know about it. It'll just be somewhere running and they won't even know it's there. And I'll leave it running for a period of time, you know, and get what I need from everything else. But we, we had, on the kid, we have a lot, we had a lot of multi-camera shoots too. You know, at one point we had five or six cameras on one scene. Um, it was, it was a lot of challenges, but um, this team that we have, some of these people were from Bogman. We lost a few temporarily from Bogman. They'll be coming back to our, our, our family, but they just couldn't uh, schedule things for this shoot for Sea of Madness. But <clears throat> we had a growth in our team from from the Sea of Madness shoot with uh, the USS Kid. And we almost about doubled in size. And all these people are so amazing. They're just so amazing. And they made it, it, they made it work. They made magic happen. And, and we got what we needed. And... Uh, had the luxury of being able to go back after thinking for a while about what, you know, and wish you had more time on the boat, but that boat's, that whole ship's about to be completely redone and it's going to be a dock for about a year and a half or so being re re it's going to look like a whole new different ship when it comes out. So we're the last film crew to have shot on it. Uh, we shot on the same vessel that uh, Tom, uh, Tom Hanks did with uh, Greyhound. That's where they shot that film. So, Ooh, there's a Nicolas Cage film on there too, right? Yeah. And you know, it makes it these shoots are are more difficult for us than than like the big Hollywood guys because we try to do most of the special effects practically if we can. That way, we're not using a bunch of CGI, and we we bring the CGI in at the end so that uh, so that we can just kind of polish it up some. But you know, kind of going back towards the old school horror film guys trying to keep it real. Um, I think it's worked out for us keeping it that way. Now, how amazing is it for you guys to be able to work on something that in the grand scheme is going to be something that's big? I mean, it's you're constantly adding on into this universe and you even have, you know, projects and plans even in the next couple of years in the future. I mean, it's, <laughs> I don't know about Daniel, but for me, it's like, it's almost like it's not even clicking yet. Like we're just doing it. We're, we're kind of just rolling with it. Like, and then you just kind of step back and it's like, well, this is a lot bigger than I thought it was. There's a lot going on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we just, cause we're just, we're just kind of focused in as, you know, like a dart and, you know, trying to make it happen. Yeah. It's, it's really, it's, it's, it's no different than what any creative person or filmmaker does or even writer or something like that, really, other than you have some legitimate success. And and I try not to think about it too much because we have, me and Mitch always say when we're talking and Kyle too, it's not about what we're, we're doing or what we did, it's about what we're doing next. And so we try to stay in that phase and creatively, it's the same as if we were just coming up with stuff on our own that nobody was ever going to see, you know. Mm -hmm. But you, if you take that into account, sometimes it can it can put you in a box, right? And you have to repeat that that worry and that concern and stuff. But I'm starting to we're we're just we're like there's like a delay between the success and the actual feeling of this is what I'm actually doing, you know. And mm -hmm. so, and for me. I don't get excited about many things until I'm actually doing them. So even especially films and stuff. We, Mitch posted something about he's going through the editing process right now or starting for Sea of Madness to give us the first edit cut so we can go from there. And he said how much he was happy and how excited he was because he loved the editing process. He loved the editing was his favorite. And I liked the comment and I was like, you know, or the post, you know, and I, I commented on there. I was like, it's really, to me, it's whatever I'm doing at the time. 
Like, so if I'm shooting at the time, that's my favorite part. If I'm writing at the time, that's my favorite part. If I'm if I'm editing or, or getting to be a part of that, then that's my favorite part. So I'm just a junkie with the production of the of it all, you know. And so I think that 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 just fogs a lot of the worry or concerns. You know, one day I'll just wake up and I'll be like, and I you know I'll be like, wow, I've made five or seven movies or whatever, and I'll be like, I am a filmmaker, you know. But until then, I don't really, you know, I just like having fun and being a part of this awesome team and these people. They're just amazing. Uh, every one of them has four or five hidden talents. Like that part, that scene on Civil War where Ant-Man bust out, you know, and, and mm -hmm. he's like, does anybody else have any magnificent talents or something? We have Ant-Mans like across the board. <laughs> like they're all Ant-Mans. <laughs> and, and they're sure, I'm sure there's things I don't know about them yet still, but it's uh they're all ant-mans um some of these people i can name them if you don't mind <clears throat> adam sure. Arthur, uh he was a uh, uh, such a uh, useful and amazing camera person and creator with that sam mcgee chase munson essential uh can't wait to work for work with them again uh moji uh, just clutch 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 on set that that guy can do anything uh, just give him a little time uh, these are our crew members. Uh, Greg Stover, uh, John Tripp was our assistant director. He's also the, the author of the book. Um, Jeremy Harrington, uh, Richard Henderson, uh, Jordan Alexander, Trey Baker, Zane Fontenot, Toby Otero, uh, Chris Lyons, Jeanette Netherlands, she was our makeup artist, amazing. Um, Serena Leggett, uh, Katie Harrington, and Eric Lepp. They've all been essential in everything and just some of our cast for this film uh a couple are returning from bogman uh benjamin gross is doc martin and uh jeff joplin is thomas uh alex london is coming on as brian uh catalina cleo uh jennifer hunter begley is coy catherine coates adam bass brent rogers dana otero uh lee jones and frankie thomas marcus allen uh, Jessa Flux, Patricia Flanagan, Charles Nail, Jonas Meyer, and Zach Cox. Um, those are just the names I want to give out because those are the awesome people I was talking about. Uh, and I'm, I might have left some few off if I did. I'm sorry, but uh, I want to get those out there because that, that's open art productions. And, and we're a huge family and we're making B independent horror films that, that make you laugh and cry and, and scares you. scare you sometimes, you know. Uh, I love it, man. Wasn't it like the Louisiana Film Commission or somebody? Didn't they share something on Facebook while we while we're down there? That, yeah, that makes me think of another person's name, uh, uh, Max Maximilian. Uh, I think Hatcher. I think is his last name. <laughs> yeah, he's amazing. Uh, we were actually shooting on the kid, and the the museum had made a post about they had taken some pictures behind the scenes while we were shooting our first few scenes and stuff, and uh, we. We had to shoot through the night, so we couldn't be on the ship until after three thirty, and we had we we could be on it until nine or eight thirty in the morning. So a couple of those nights, we had to go through that that length and stuff. And being out there, uh, they had made some posts about the shoot, and the Louisiana Film Commission had seen it and shared it on their Facebook page and let some of their folks or people that are following them know that what we were doing know where we were filming and stuff. And that actually brought about, I want to say Max came because he saw the post and he just came to volunteer to help. And he became, he's, he's essential. He, he, he ended up being a huge part of, of being able to complete the, the, the reshoots that we had to do a couple of weeks ago. So there's this word called kismet. I'm not sure it's more like just the way things happen sometimes, you know, and we, we get a lot of that. We get a lot of uh, solutions sometimes. We're all, we're a group of people that just try to find solutions. We don't really toss around much else, but other than finding solutions and, and uh, it's almost like you draw to it what you're putting out, you know, and that was a huge part of it, but they were, they were behind us too. And now we're on, on their radar kind of, because before with Bogman, you were saying earlier about how does it feel Mm -hmm. it's it's uh it's different but it's the same you know but it's um it's more slower 
it's like what we were doing before with bog man we were just doing out of a, a blood sweat and tears passion project just to to see if we could do it you know and and and, and we had a lot of struggles we me and mitch and i and uh, kyle helped out a little bit with our film before that unknown strangers and that was my first feature that i had ever shot so bog man was my second and see madness my third but i've learned from every one of them but bogman came a little slower but it was more of a passion thing we didn't even really we were making it for maybe a film festival maybe we could get it in a film festival that's what we were kind of looking at the whole time you know and so after this deal with green apple um which is still slowly sinking in it's going to be sinking in for the next eight years probably because that's how many films we got to get out to them so wow right yeah <laughs> but most of them are conceived the next two are already scripted you know so it, it's already you know we're getting ahead that's kind of what i was getting to is like things are coming slower at us and we're starting to see things but now honestly the sides of the business that i was never really that much of a fan of are coming more into play in my eyes and it's the ones like money and financing and things like that you know uh but we're still just going to keep searching for solutions and, and keep pushing on and keep uh we're we're like scrubbing bubbles on a set you know like once we get out there we're the we're our type of tactics they're not maybe the best and probably some people that have been on traditional film sets and and they might look at us and think we're all crazy or whatever but it's just <laughs> madness, madness and it works for us and and so far nobody's really gotten hurt so <laughs> actually i love the way you know your, your team talks about your films now how important is it as a indie horror filmmaker to generally love what you do compared to seeing it as just a job mm -hmm. oh god yeah i mean because we're not we're not really getting paid for this you know we do, it's coming out of our own pockets and uh just the editing on the bog man i mean it was late nights and it was problems here and there and you, you know you're just you have to push through it with everything you got because you you love this and you want to see it to the end and you want to see how great it can be and it's you know you're not you're not getting paid for it it's just for you you know it's for it's for you on the inside it's like that accomplishment and so i think i think that in a way helps us push further what do you think yeah, I think so. I think that's, I can understand that. And I, I can feel that too. It's, I think it's, um, for me, it's not hard really because I've had a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of day jobs, you know, and, and I worked for a long time doing things and getting, I always told my daughter, I see, I work at a TV station now, make, uh, that's my nine to five, work at a TV station making commercials. And so she told me the other day, I had to pick her up from school and drop her at the off, off the house. And she was like, well, you guys, I, so I got to go back to work. She was like, well, you spend a lot of time there. Your job sure to keep you a lot. And I was like, well, I was like, you know, I've done a lot less for more, or a lot more for less, you know? And she's like, really? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, but the whole filmmaking thing, as long as I'm able to sustain my, my day gig, you know and all that and stuff and that's that's the hardest part really to me i was telling some people we just went back to reshoot on the kid for a couple of days and i was telling some of the folks there i was like the hardest part really is keeping life together until we shoot again you know that's the release and the the you know when, when we get together and and not even necessarily for shooting like we're going to be getting together to do some model shooting and stuff like that i got a lot of ideas that i want to do for extra stuff but uh, we have some plans about a property that we're going to locate with that one of our our art department guys has and uh we're going to start using that as kind of a home base you know for us in a sense because the next two films we're going to be able to shoot right here in our area for the next two years and that's going to be really a home base and change a lot of uh, game changers for us as far as that goes so i see it more as just like uh, like playing with sand you know i'm just you know because i'm already uh, I keep that in regular life kind of separated in a sense. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I try to, you know, work and get my bills paid and, and try to cover all that. And then what's left out when my wife and my kids let me or when, 
my wife and my kids were actually in the bog man so it was a lot easier to facilitate that because they were on board too so um it was able to have fun with it you know and that's what it's all about even the long hours you know it's just you just remind yourself of how lucky you are to be doing what you love you know because i mean i because i mean I, I can imagine it's hard for me like i love this is my hobby to, uh, my youtube channel this is my this is fun but I got a really job. thank you thank you i got a full-time job you know i family all that life and i can imagine as you know as a filmmaker as well to balance that because most indie filmmakers they have a full-time job to, to, so to balance those multiple aspects of life has to be tough and finding excellent balance. Right. And you know, I was thinking like with, with any kind of passion project, like I do music, I do a lot of different things on the side other than, than just movies. With any passion project, you really you really stress over a lot because you know it's it's like your baby, you know, you want it to be as good as it can be. And so you want to put those long hours in and it can take away from those other aspects, family, you know, your job. I mean, luckily we work at a place to where when we're not doing our actual work, we can actually work on the movie too at the same time. So it just kind of Good. goes together. Yeah. We're pretty structured about that. We'll even just meet passing in the mornings and stuff and just have, you know, Hey, talk later. Okay. Kind of stuff. We, generally have a hub here with that so that's a big benefit to us most of us that you know mitch kyle and myself mainly i guess um it's um it's 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 the how many hats you wear right it's how many hats you wear you know and like i said still with all those names i mentioned earlier everybody's wearing you know three to five hats kind of thing you know and, and uh, at any given moment you know you gotta you know drop one and pull the other one out of the pocket and put it on and get after it kind of thing um yeah while they were down on the kid i was working on the opening title sequence and the opening credits and stuff and uh there'd be times that they were setting up shots or discussing things here in the future and, and i was working on the theme song for the movie right. i mean we just we're all just jumping around from different places getting <clears throat> different things done because they they got to be done and you know we're we're all we got <laughs> we are getting better at that as far as especially going through the what we were lucky enough to get to go through with green apple was the distribution deal and everything and set up the future for what we're doing but you gotta even from your struggles you gotta try to learn stuff you know and so when we learned how we had to, because we had never submitted a movie for distribution before. You know, oh, I, just, I, I, I knew there was a process to it, but I didn't know what that would be in my head. I had an idea, but, you know, it's like when you're you're going on vacation when you're a kid, you know, and your parents tell you you're going to Colorado and you're just driving forever. And you're like, imagine what Colorado is going to look like. And yeah. you have to it, it's nothing like what you thought, you know. So I just kind of let it go for a while. And, um, but it, 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 it accumulates right there you know it comes together in those processes and when it's all just out of the labor of love i think that's what we have you know we, we have a code and generally it starts with the writing and we have some good good solid writers um and even people that are able to our scripts are more guidelines there are certain things at times that you know mitch is you know fall in love with the words in a sense and need those actual words to be spoken and but the writing develops a lot for us, gives a lot of flexibility. And we're able to, we almost have to write scenes for sets that we haven't seen yet, or for sets that we know of, you know, like wooden, woodland sets and things like that, or areas around our town that we know of. Now, the Sea of Madness thing was kind of a contradiction to that, <laughs> but that, that was something that, all signs. It's like when you take the magic eight ball and you show, and Mitch just sat in a room, I guess, with the magic eight ball for a while and asked it a bunch of questions about Sea of Madness. And then the next day we all learned <laughs> what the plan was. And we were like, okay, you know, let's do it, you know? And so. And every one of these movies, when they came to me with the idea, I was like, I have no idea how we're going to pull this. <laughs> Every time. Yeah. And somehow he's, he pulls it out of his hat. I, we got to give it to the guy. It's, it's something to be bear witness to. It's uh, the first time when we did unknown strangers, 
when him and the director of that, Chris, came and asked me, I laughed at them. They asked me they wanted me to shoot their feature film. And I, I, at first, I was like, you're talking about a short film? And they were like, no, they're a feature. I was like, God, you're crazy. I was like, man, I got a full-time job. I got kids. I got, you know, I got groceries. I got, you know, mowing the yard. I got leaves falling all the time. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. You know, and uh, I went home. And I sat there and I was like, you know, I might never get asked to do this again. And I called them both up that night and we went ahead with that. So, and uh, it was a good film, but we had a lot of struggles and very few solutions to find. And a lot of constraints that we didn't work prepared for, but I learned a lot, you know, and, and doing Bogman was kind of always the plan. Even during that, we were kind of kicking around Bogman. Um, and so, I think the consistency of it is something that surprises people, even myself. Like we did these films, what, 21, 23 and 20, no, 20, yeah, 20, yeah, 23 and 24. So is it 20, 22? No, no, it was 22 and 23. Yeah, two, 22, 23 and 24. Yeah, we went from, what was it, like summer of 22 into spring of 23, mm -hmm. something like that. And then we started editing all that stuff. Yeah, so for the past two and a half, I mean, you know, three years, that's what we've been doing. And it's, you know, relatively quick success at it. Not saying we've reached our goal yet, but having that, the luxury of just having distribution is something that really changes a lot of, uh, you know, having, and the people with Green Apple are amazing. I mean, uh, they, so far they've been really, really uh, helpful. But good learning the, the way in which to send it to them, like I was saying earlier, was a good process for us <laughs> to learn because now we know that. And mm -hmm. we actually can prepare for some of those things. <laughs> we actually did pretty good in the process because I think we were one of the quickest films that they got through. Um, I can't remember the names they called it, but uh, uh, QC or something like that. Yeah, and, quality control. Yeah. yeah. And uh, they were worried about it for a minute, but they had some things they had to change because we had a cover song in the original version of the film. It was yeah. a cover of a parody. It's a parody of a cover. Yeah. That's what it is. And <laughs> it was uh, for the it end was, of the film. The Sound of Silence. Yeah. It was the, the disturbed version of Sound of Silence, but it was parodied about the bog man. It was hilarious. Oh, I love it. Held up in the legal stuff, so we had to make some quick adjustments to the ending. So that's why the ending seems a little dislodged, if you noticed or whatever. We had to quickly do that on the fly and get it to make the release date uh, around uh, Halloween. So every one of our films were hoping to release around Halloween, right before Halloween. We're gonna try to make sure that every one of them has that release date range or so. So. Right now we have Sea of Madness coming in October. There's a trailer on uh, our Facebook page for Sea of Madness. Uh, uh, and we'll be bringing more probably here in the coming months. We're going to take a little break because we promoted pretty hard while we were shooting. So we're just going to take a break and kind of come back hard with some uh, some teasers and things of that nature. And as it gets closer. And then... Uh, the Bog Anthology movie will be the next feature film, and it's a three-part, uh, you know, short three short films together. Um, and we're going to cover a lot of ground in that, and that's something that's really big for us too, because a lot of those productions, while we're doing it, we're going to have different teams running at different times or at the same time. So we're having three, basically three short films and a feature. So we're allowing it allows our crew to kind of spread our wings a little bit. Some people can take over some director roles, you know, to, to do one of these shorts and that's what we're doing. And then, and what that entails is other people filling roles that they had, you know, so now you're getting new people being DPs and new people being, you know, uh, sound, uh, you know, learning and, and doing it, you know, and, and having somebody there with you kind of showing you, you know, now check this, get this angle. What about this? Well, yeah. So that's what we're all about in that sense. So this next one also is this see Madness was like that in a lot of ways, you know. Um and all these people are just like sponges. They absorb so much, you know. It's like how during um Bogman, he was starring in the film, um, editing the film. Um I was the Bogman at times. He was doing music for the entire <laughs> film. Um and he was the Bogman stunt double at times. One, yeah. of, one of the three Bogman stunt doubles we had. 
Um, so that's that's just and probably there's probably three or four other things I don't even know about, you know, that he that he did on that set or for that film that I don't, you know, it's just that's just the way it is, you know. And and while we were filming that and editing all that, I was writing the fifth or sixth movie in the series uh, way down the line. It's yeah. just we're not going to say shit. it, yes. Holy shit. <laughs> but it's aliens. <laughs> it's going to be great. This whole timeline, there's, I mean, we've had so many good ideas. And, and what I love about these projects is we tell stories about creatures in ways that nobody else tells them. We tell them it's, it's a new, fresh light on every creature that we're bringing to the movies. And ones you haven't really ever really seen that much of, you know, or heard that much of. You know. Some of them that we have coming are kind of, you know, obscure kind of creatures, I guess, you know. Yeah. But we we have, we have some pretty entailed plans, and each one of these films has its own backstory, in a sense. Because once we hit stride, after the Bog Anthology, we'll be going into the Honey Hole. And that's about an evil gin. It's a modern retelling of the Fisherman and the Lamp story. And that's also interesting. It, it involves uh, a curse and... Uh, the gin has his whole, you know, 400, 500 year backstory, you know, and he, uh, he was part of a treasure that was stolen off a Spanish ship by, uh, John Lafitte and John Lafitte brought it in into the, the no man's land, Louisiana back right before the Louisiana purchase. And that treasure found its way up into the hills of Arkansas around mountain Bend, And from there, this, this gin takes over and he's freed because of some situation with the owner of the, the lamp he's freed because the lamp owner is no longer able he's got one wish left and he never has made it so the gin's been free for hundreds of years and he took on the shape of being a person and yeah. that's some nefarious business he's been up to for a long time and uh the team richard and the crew for the chasing bogman show they come across him and eventually but through that film, we introduced some new characters uh, that, that haven't really been seen before, as well as in Face the Music and, and uh, the Bog Manifest and uh, the Rake episode, the Bog Anthology. So we got plenty of other stuff coming, but it all kind of, we, we have an idea of how it comes back together. But we're still kind of in the writing room on that. That's something we got to get more busy on doing, but we're getting ahead of the curve a little bit now. It's definitely building to a huge finale, I think. Right, yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be a yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, I'm, like a and I'm definitely kind of thing. like an end game. <laughs> I'm definitely looking forward to it. Now I got one last question. It's a two part question in for for the both of you. Okay, from the first part of the question was okay. What's one thing, um, from Bogman to Sea of Madness that you took from Bogman that you were like, wow, that worked fucking great. Let's take that over to Sea of Madness. And what's one thing that you're like, holy shit, that was awful. I didn't like how that worked. Let's not take that over. Um, I'm just going to say from the from the cinematography side of things, it's it just the, the tactics in that sense. One thing that I knew kind of would work, and I always loved it, but when we did our own blood or blood shots in Bogman, I was, I was like, it works for me, you know, <laughs> and like, you know, some people say you make movies for yourself. So me and me and Mitch both like, yeah, we're good. We actually went back one day and got more blood shots because we wanted to look more blood. So <laughs> we went back with two gallons another day later with bigger bottles and got more blood. So that's how much we were down with that. So we carried that over and there's a lot of blood and stuff in the Sea of Madness as well. Even though we were on the ship, we were able to pull it off in situations. They, they were very, uh, uh, blood friendly for us and so that's one thing i would definitely keep that that's for there um for me this might be something maybe not what you're thinking but for me a lot of my camera uh out of necessity through the bog man uh, it had to end up being handheld like very shaky not very shaky but at times shaky and chaos which it fit the 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 rate of the film i feel but a lot of it was really just out of necessity of production and just trying to keep up with people on a hot day in the Louisiana woods where I got a guy in a carpet suit. <laughs> you just got to grab it. I'm going off the sticks, you know, and you just, myself, we're doing it live, you know. 
And so, but that was still planned out. It just, it, it, that's something I wanted to steer away from a little bit with Sea of Madness. And I think we were able to do that. Um, it's the camera move. It's, it's still, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a next progression up. I believe everything that's what's with these films. Everything we're just trying to do better the next time. So Sea of Madness with the inclusion right. of Chase and Adam and, uh, uh, Sam, it took us, it's like we walked in on the ground floor when we were thought we were still in the parking lot. And then next thing you know, we're getting out of elevator on the third floor and we're like, I don't even remember walking in. And you're like, how did we get here? Kind of thing. And so that's the kind of stuff I would keep, you know, or, or ditch away would be the motion. I want, I, want, I want the storytelling to get better with the visual aspects of things. But sometimes we just got to take the best apple out of the bunch and move on to the next scene. But yeah. My keep tacket, tactic. Uh, <laughs> all right. So in the bog, man, we had Mitch do the first rough edit. And then that rough edit came to Daniel. And Daniel did his rough edit on that and put things in there that we'd forgotten or, you know, that just may have gotten left out or something. Added some extra stuff for, for uh, visually stunning kind of thing, you know. And then when he was done, he brought it to me and I put my all my good polishing techniques on there and color grading and all that kind of stuff. And I think it it really helped the process, I think, for, for us to all bounce it off each other like that and put out the best product we could. And uh, this time around, we're going to do the same thing, uh, but I believe it's going to be a much better quality the way we're going to be dealing with the clips and everything. Yeah. Um, as far as things that I would never do again, oh, man, that is a tough one. In Bog Man, we, uh, what was it, like the first week, second week, our, our audio system went out. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. Our audio system went out, and for the rest of the time, the second weekend shooting. Second weekend, yeah. So the rest of the time we shot, all of the dialogue was recorded on cell phones, but we had to make it work, and it it turned out better than we expected. But man, that was rough. And you have all these people with different voice recordings on their cell phone, and you're trying to sync them all up with the movie. And... <laughs> oh God, yeah. it's chaos. It's a nightmare. It was horrible. It was but. like that spaghetti bowl with uh, Michael Keaton in the Flash. You know, it's just it's, it's like audio recordings just going together. You're out there. Just, uh, thank, just God for, uh, thank God for thank uh, God for oh, what do you call it? Music City. The uh, oh, the sound sound people you know. No, I mean the when you go in and you oh, record the ADR. Yeah, the ADR. I couldn't think of the name of it. ADR. <laughs> a lot of that did. ADR. Yeah. That's something we've gotten a little better at too. I think. Uh, oh yeah. Um, but that's all it is really just trying to get better, you know, and, and keep doing what we love and we want to really grow and, and help out our community in the long run. Cause a lot of these people that are in these films are local stage actors or just people that thought they could act. I mean, there might be, you know, there might be somebody that there's several times that, uh, like uh, the guy that plays the mayor in Bogman, um, my, he's just a friend of mine, never acted in anything really uh, much, you know, but he's always, I always knew it. So when I started making commercials, I had him do a couple, you know, and I kind of in the back of my head knew this kind of time was coming, but I didn't know it was going to be this soon or now kind of thing or with what. Hmm. And so when we got to, he, he played a significant role in Unknown Strangers, a really good dramatic kind of role for a period of time there that turns into a, a comedic kind of role or a goofball kind of role, but he nailed it. One of the best things about that feature, really. Okay. Um, and in Bob Man, I was supposed to play the mayor initially. Really? Yeah, yeah. And, and I was like, I told Mitch, I was like, because he asked me to do it, and I was like, yeah, I'll try. You know, I said, I really, I don't want to be split between being behind the camera and in front of it, but I'll try to make it work, you know, and I read the script and all I heard myself doing was a Marcus impersonation. <laughs> uh, every time I play the lines out loud, I was like, that's just Marcus. I'm not, I'm not me. I'm just, I'm not even channeling anybody else. I'm just Marcus. And so I called him up and uh, got him involved. I told him because he works, you know, just like like you were saying, you know, most people, these people, they they, they have full time jobs, you know, stuff like that. And 
he he's going to be more of a part but now we have him a, a ancillary role in the universe to where he's kind of like um the the uh, angels you know like the charlie's angels you know the bosley guy that, that's calling yeah. him coming in to get their missions and stuff this is what he is his, he's going to put so he's going to be able to be a part of it but as much as he wants or as little as he needs to be you know and that way we have him secured for that but we also have him for other cameo roles that are kind of tongue-in-cheek and you'll see those coming if you keep up with the films and stuff um but most of these people they're not you know they're not necessarily you now some of them are see a madness our, our cast stepped up uh, significantly as far as like casting you know we we were able to get uh, a, pro, a professional wrestler uh, involved, Alex, a, a uh, adult, I guess, film star, I guess. Yeah, uh, award winning uh, adult film star. Jessa Flux is going to be in C. She's in C. Nice. And, and um, we have. It, it's funny how it raises everybody else, you know. And mm -hmm. so we're going to institute the same kind of thing and open casting kind of stuff. You know, that's what we're going to do down the road, but always looking to bring in people that want to, we won't want, you know, we'll take want over talent any day kind of thing. You know, somebody feels like they don't have talent, but they really want to do something, even on the, on the crew side, you know, that's what we get, you know, and that's what we're kind of looking forward to. Like I was saying earlier with the, the doing the triple feature for the next film with the three short films, we, we got a lot of spots open up. So now we have a lot of people we can, you know, catch up to speed and get, get more credit and, do more work and have more part of things and we all rise together that's what we always say yeah. Mitch is the kind of guy he's the kind of guy that if he has an idea he's going to make it happen some way or another I've known the dude since 2003 we started playing music together back then and even that far back back in 2003 with his little VHS camera he was making movies by himself with whoever would come at and he's just been leveling up ever since then so it's yeah, it's an amazing journey. It really is. Yeah, we're just happy to be a big part of it, and it's really life changing in a lot of ways. You know, yeah. So, I mean, uh, it, but it's all kind of sinking in now, and it's slowly. So I absorb things slowly sometimes. But I always tell people, even when we're shooting and stuff, I'll be like, "Talk to me like I'm a five year old." You know, like when I'm, I'm talking about <laughs> it, you're talking to actors or talking to people on set, my crew. If there's a problem, I'm like, "Just talk to me like I'm a five year old and break it down so I can." You know, I need all the the data to help the situation because that's we just want to find solutions and you know even with actors a lot of times they'll they'll miss something or they'll misspeak a line or something and they take their themselves and they're like oh man I screwed that up you know and you're like I'm like no 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 you know don't worry about it don't don't spend a second worrying about what you think you messed up on just take a deep breath and do it better you know because you can't waste energy. It's it's just wasted energy. Just it's that's what's a, we're not doing it live TV. So we have that. We have that. You know, if you mess up, that's fine. If you feel like sometimes we don't know you messed up unless you tell us you messed yeah. up. And so some of these actors, they're starting. We have a lot of improv that we kind of do at times. You know, and and sometimes it's not necessarily full improv, but what it is is it's improv until they get to their next line in their head. So they'll sometimes there'll be a brief period where there's some more fuddling or or shaking on a door than necessary but it's okay you know because it builds suspense kind of thing as long as they're they meet on the other end you know and and they're, That's they're important a lot of our actors are phenomenal all of them really have done a oh, phenomenal yeah. job uh, every one of them i can't wait for y'all to see sea of madness because it's a it's a huge step up from from bogman as far as stories are there so we're saying quality wise and we were able to take a little more time and and focus it was a totally different kind of shoot though totally different uh, we did Bogman in about 24, 26, nine consecutive days. See right. Madness so far, we've done 12. And we got one or two days, three days, maybe a reshoot kind of pickup stuff that we got to do. And, but it was some concentrated days. It was like those little our orange juices you used to get when you was a kid. You had the freezer, you had <laughs> in there, and it's just pop, pops in the pan. Uh -huh. Trait, yeah. So uh, those days on the kid were long hours, like sixteen hours. Oh, uh, that that vessel is amazing, though. It was it was, oh. it was such a blessing to be able to shoot on it, and it actually has an energy in it, and that's what I think helped us through that whole week because everybody we didn't have one 
I'm a veteran. I was in the guard for 12 years and I traveled a lot doing, sometimes I go places and stay in gymnasiums with people that I didn't necessarily know for like weeks at a time. And there was always like an altercation or a fight with somebody or somebody had somebody's shoes or something. There's always something, you know, boiled over. And in this situation, nothing. Everybody was always with a smile. I mean, something do some pretty, you know, I mean, we didn't have showers for the first couple of days. Uh, we couldn't stay on the ship because of the plumbing issue that we, what we thought. So we ended up staying on air mattresses. So it kind of put a hamper on things, but still people were getting up with smiles and brushing their teeth with water bottles. And <laughs> I mean, you know, we had facilities, but no showers. But then we actually ended up making a deal with the, one of the local uh, 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 gyms there, Anytime Fitness, I think, that let us come and shower. They were just a block away. So that's what I'm saying. Everything just we had solutions for. Like one of my favorite lines is from uh, from the movie, the, uh, the uh, episode one, Star Wars, is when Qui-Gon Jinn says, I'm sure a, so a solution will pre present itself. You know, and I'm just always stuck with that line. And I'm just like, yeah. and if we just focus on something, we'll find a solution somewhere. Generally, we do. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Good. I said, I'm sorry. You, you, guys, too. <laughs> you guys are absolutely amazing. Listen, and I want to continue following your team, Mitch, on the journey. Awesome. And by the way, Mitch, I think he invited me out for whichever movie you're filming in 2027. And it seems yes, like I'm yes. far away from now. And he said that he had a role for me. So I'm curious to see what that is. Yeah, you're going to do. I think it's, I think as far as I know, it's, it might be a producer role. That's one of our um, caveats for each film is in it. Uh, I guess I can't, it's not about giving it away because it's going to happen anyway, regardless. <laughs> it's our producer in the bog man died, you know, a, a vicious death with the head stomp. Yes. Yes. So you are going to be a producer, a big shot producer that flies in to try to run the team. And somehow we're going to kill you. Uh, <laughs> I just fucking love it. Fucking love it. <laughs> I love it always room for returning too because we're, we're kind of like a comic book the way we approach our, our film <laughs> we'll bring you back with some makeup and stuff and yeah. they won't even know they'll be like that was the same guy like, yeah <laughs> already killed him. you know no nah. <laughs> like, yeah i'm looking forward to it i'm yeah. definitely looking forward yeah. i don't know exactly the part but i know that's somewhere where it wants to yeah so we'll be in touch yeah we'll get you sounds there. good right. kyle daniel sure. where can everyone find you uh, you can find me on Twitter. I'm a bearded believer, a bearded underscore believer on Twitter. Um, and uh, I get on there and I talk about all kind of weird stuff in the movies and uh, and uh, Facebook mainly. I'm on Instagram, the Stark Lens on Instagram or YouTube. Uh, a lot of our trailers and stuff are on the Stark Lens YouTube page. Um, and I believe all the movie stuff is on Mitch's yeah, YouTube, it, right? Mitch's YouTube page. He carries uh, Mitch it on Lane. there too. Um, yeah. And then and the, the, the Apple page too. That's they're going to release. They have some stuff there too. Um, yeah, the entire Bogman movie is also on YouTube right. uh, through Green Apple Entertainment, so you can watch it on there as well. Nice. Yeah, nice. So I'm gonna have the down in the description box, guys. I'm gonna have the link to Mitch's YouTube page for you guys to check it out. Listen, go to YouTube. Go to Tubi. Go to Amazon. Yeah, right. plenty of places. Bogman. Stay, stay tuned. Yes, yeah, see Bogman and get get ready for a Sea of Madness, gentlemen. It's been a pleasure having you on. Thank you, thanks, sir. It's been a pleasure with you. Thank yeah. you. Appreciate yeah. it a lot. Really loved it. And I'll see I'll see y'all in twenty twenty seven. Right, man. Well, we're gonna get you. Take care. <laughs> thank you. All right, everyone. Well, thank you for coming to the Horror Room. I'm Travis Bruce. I'll see you guys next time. Take care. <laughs>